Hello everyone. Welcome to a new course that is Hydraulics CE321 and this is the introductory lecture. So in this lecture we are basically going to go through the overall syllabus and the things that we are going to learn and we'll also briefly discuss why we need to learn the things that we are going to learn. This is the syllabus. You can download it from the official website. So we'll go over the different topics one by one. Firstly, flow in pipes. We have already learned about laminar flow in the previous semester. So in this semester, we'll also learn about turbulent flow. And because in most of the civil engineering applications, flow inside the pipe is generally turbulent. And we'll need to learn about the governing equations of turbulent flow. What are the factors that affect turbulent flow inside a pipe? Its application can be found in various fields. For example, let's take a tank of water. So if you fit a pipe with it, then what will be the discharge through this pipe? It will depend on its length, its diameter, its roughness, and so on. So if we add another pipe, which is longer and narrower, what will be the discharge through this one? Then if we add a branch pipe to the main pipe, then what will be the discharge through this branch? If we add another branch, then what will be the discharge in this branch? Whether this new branch will be having more water or less water than the previous branch and so on. So all these things we are going to learn in our subsequent lectures. In a household setup, you have probably noticed that if you open the tap in bathroom, then the water in the shower decreases and all these things decreases together if somebody opens the tap in kitchen. So these are some household problems. We are going to learn how one opening one tap affects the flow in the other tap. And that will require understanding of flow inside pipes and how the frictional resistance, length of pipe, diameter of pipe, all these things affect the flow. In a large scale setup, let's imagine a township or a campus or a simple neighborhood maybe. So here, if we want to provide water to all these houses, then we'll set up a over a tank. And from this tank, we'll lay out a pipe. So from this pipe, we'll lay out a large pipe network, which will provide water to all these houses. Now. A house very close to the water tank will have very good pressure of water. However, a house far away from the water tank will get less pressure. And as an engineer, you will have to make the decision up to how much distance can you provide water from this tank or to how many people, how many houses. You'll also have to make the decision about what is the diameter of pipe to be uh, laid to a, uh, to a house, for a single family house, you may have to provide a half an inch diameter of pipe, but for a large apartment, you may have to provide a larger pipe or maybe two or three parallel pipes and so on. So these kind of situations we are going to handle after we learn about pipe flow. Then comes the next topic, which is impact of jets. So when you open a tap, water falls on the ground or the floor. So the floor experiences some kind of force. Now, what will be this force? Sometimes it's not important, but in some cases, the force exerted by a flowing stream or jet of water is important. So let's take a plate and let's hit it with a jet of water. Now, the jet of water after, after hitting the plate will get deflected. So in this deflection, what's happening is that the momentum of water is changing. And whenever momentum changes, we can expect some kind of force. So that force is being exerted on this plate. We'll also learn how to quantify this force based on the discharge of water, velocity of water, and so on. We'll also learn about a similar situation when the plate is inclined, or when the plate is curved, or when the plate itself is moving along with the jet. This kind of study is important in case of study of turbines where 
we try to run a turbine by hitting it with a jet of water generally so that brings us to our next topic which is hydraulic machines we'll mostly study about turbines and pumps in our hydraulic machines chapter so turbines are basically machines where we use a motion of wind or water or sometimes some other gas or vapor so that it can be converted to some other kind of energy generally electrical energy so what happens is we try to rotate this kind of a setup a runner with moving water or moving wind or moving vapor and it rotates so this is connected to a shaft so this shaft is connected to a generator or dynamo and this dynamo generates electricity turbines may be of different types if we hit it with a jet of water it is called an impulse turbine sometimes we don't exactly hit it with water but we put it inside the casing and let water flow through the casing and because of the spiral shape of the casing the water has to flow in a rotational way and because of that it pushes this runner in the direction of flow and it rotates and that's how we can classify it as either impulse turbine or reaction turbine then comes pump pump is basically an opposite of turbine in turbine we use the energy of water or gas or air to generate energy in case of a pump we use energy to move water or air or some other kind of gas then so we use a motor electric motor or sometimes you can run it with gas power or uh, petrol or diesel power also so this will rotate a shaft so this shaft will be connected to this kind of a impeller this impeller will rotate now and that rotating impeller will push the water through this outlet and that's how you pump water it is not always this setup sometimes it may be a different kind of pump for example let's have a motor which is rotating a shaft the shaft is connected to a wheel instead of directly connected in connecting it to an impeller then this wheel is connected with a crank like this this crank is connected to a piston this piston will move back and forth inside a cylinder and this cylinder is having an outlet through which water can flow out so this is how you pump water using this kind of a setup so there are lots of other variations of pumps also so we'll learn about all those things as well now we have the idea that there are different types of pumps and there can also be different sizes of pumps as well as turbines so we as engineers may be required to select what kind of what type or what capacity of pumps or turbines are to be used in different situations for turbines we decide based on availability of water or the fluid that's going to run the turbine and the head available sometimes also the speed generally available for example if you have lots of water then using a very small turbine is not going to uh, utilize all the wat uh, water power or the or the energy available however if you have very small amount of water then if you put a very large turbine a small amount of water will not be even able to run the turbine so that's a loss as well similarly in case of pumps also based on the type of fluid we may have to select different pump, uh, pumps for example if you are trying to pump gas or air you may have to use a different pump for water different kinds of pump for viscous liquids different pumps and sometimes you may have to pump concrete or sludge so for all those purposes also we may have to select different types of pump again it will very uh, depend on quantity of liquid or fluid to be pumped and the head to be covered that means up to how much height or how much distance you are going to pump the liquid so based on all these things we'll have to select the type of pump or turbine and their sizes 
then we'll discuss about open channel hydraulics which is going to be a major part of our uh, entire syllabus so here we are going to discuss how channel flow uh, is different from pipe flow and various types of channels the types may be based on their shapes so a channel may be of different shape such as rectangular trapezoidal parabolic triangular semicircular and many other types then materials of a channel may be different it may be an artan channel like this or we may also provide concrete lining like this so that water loss is minimized and it is also protected against erosion there may be natural channel natural channel basically means a river or some natural stream and artificial channel is what we build we'll discuss different types of flow in open channel so basically unsteady and steady flow then uniform and non uniform flow in non uniform flow we'll also discuss gradually varied flow versus rapidly varying flow gradually varied means when you see that the flow properties such as depth velocity is changing very slowly so in a very sh short stretch we'll think that the flow is uniform but over a very large distance you will see that the depth or velocity etc are changing sometimes this flow parameters change very rapidly suppose a channel is flowing suddenly there is a fall so in that case the flow will also vary its properties very rapidly so these are different classifications of flow then we'll also discuss about the governing equations of flow equations governing uniform flow non uniform flow then unsteady flow and we'll also discuss about analytical equations and empirical equations analytical equations are equations that you can derive with pen and paper based on the knowledge of the physical phenomena but in some cases we may have to use empirical equations where we have the general idea of the physics of a physical phenomena but we are finding some difficulty in deriving a mathematical equation or formula so therefore we go for experiments to find out some additional quantities and those are called empirical equations then there are different applications of open channel flow applications uh, in terms of drainage so a drainage application may be suppose you have a community where there are different houses from all these houses different drains will come out and those drains will have to discharge the water or the waste water to some other place so for that we may have to design the different types of and sizes of channels what will be its cross section what will be its uh, slope what will be the material to be used and so on if this is not properly done then we may have some kind of flooding in the area or some clogging of the drains then we may have to uh, discuss about flood and erosion control as well so in this topic we'll have to discuss how much water a natural channel can carry based on its geometrical cross section its slope its resistance and so on so based on that we'll have to uh, we can find out how much water it can carry and then based on some possible rainfall events if we see that uh, more than that amount of water is going to come in this river so we have to take flood control measures for that particular river similarly for erosion also uh, we have to study the cross section of the river the materials and see what kind of stresses the incoming flood is going to exert on the river bed as well as the river bank and based on that we'll have to take some erosion control measures as well then comes water supply so water supply for households is generally done through pipes but in large scale when you are going to supply water for irrigation fields for agricultural fields so in this case we have to provide water through channels so these are very uh, very huge projects actually 
and for that the proper design of channel and the branch channels is very important because if you do not design these channels properly then you are going to lose a lot of water due to uh, infiltration or evaporation and the conveyance of water is not going to be very efficient so this is about our open channel flow studies finally we are going to touch slightly upon a topic called computational fluid dynamics it is a topic uh, or an area of study where we use the governing equations of flow to predict the flow behavior in real life situations so it will use the different equations such as navier stokes equation or your laminar flow equations turbulent flow equations and open channel equations or a combination thereof so all these equations are used so that we can find out what is the pressure what is the velocity what are the stresses at different points of a flow field and those are very important in river engineering or water supply engineering erosion studies etc because it will give us the depth of water and the erosion possibilities etc it is very widely used in aerospace and automotive automobile engineering also and in chemical and medical sciences also it is very often used so we'll briefly discuss about how these things are useful uh, we are mostly going to study what can be done using computational fluid dynamics rather than how it can be done because how it can be done is a completely different course in itself so this is the complete syllabus of hydraulics for this semester and we'll go one by one from next lecture onwards thank you